Hey guys, welcome to No Tux Allowed. Uh, it is not NTA. If you Google NTA, you're going to get completely different shows that are completely not related to what we're talking about here because uh, we we don't talk about tux here, but except for sometimes and maybe. But I am I am uh, you know not the guy that normally introduces everybody. I'm just Josh, and I've got my big buddy. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got my big buddy over here, Big Pod. He's just hanging out with us. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Well, How that's good to hear. Yeah, I am doing perfectly fine. So, uh, Steve is on special mission this week. Uh, he he might not be back for a week, maybe two. Uh, we don't know. Uh, that's entirely on him. And uh, hopefully, uh, I can hopefully fill his role of not making bad jokes and saying absolutely horrible bad opinions of making big pod go on tangents <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh big pod i've been reading some uh i've well a it actually started with me perusing the you blue teams uh git repositories and i found yeah. they have this iso generator script right yeah so and uh you know uh like last summer or something like that you and i got together we recorded a video on making on making custom image of which by the way i actually have an edited version of that video now and it is in fact, <laughs> horrible but i'm going to upload it anyway because <laughs> we need to get something going on my channel but anyways uh so i've been messing around with turning that into an actual image and now i just need to figure out how to write an se linux policy <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it got me playing around with uh the idea and i know that some people in my own community has commented on me making josh os so now i'm sitting here looking down a rabbit hole of you blue images again and messing around with stuff again and i just want to talk about atomic desktops this week i'm sure that you want to talk about them this week too <laughs> sure why not <laughs> all right so uh when when I'm talking about what we're talking about here, when we're talking about atomic desktop environments, or well, not even environments, but atomic desktop systems, is we're talking about a system is, is the this thing that we mentioned a couple times here, where we're talking about an image based system. And uh, how you might know, better know it as like Fedora Silverblue or the immutable systems, but they're not really immutable. <laughs> There is still there... too much that can be it can be mutable. So yeah, there is still too much that can be mutable because you know you can write outside of slash home in some places still. Yeah, <laughs> slash var to be specific, and slash yep. Etsy. Yep. But so uh, they decided to rebrand. They're no longer calling it immutable. They're calling it uh, atomic, which I think it's a bit better of a fit, in yes. my opinion. Yes, and and it is an old old name they used to use before they went for silver blue and immutable branding yeah I, and i think the reason why they dropped the naming was because uh the guy that was running the original fedora atomic desktop team started working for like another company and he held the trademark for that naming scheme not sure yeah i'm not 100 percent certain on that don't quote me yeah <laughs> Yeah, I have been spinning around, and I actually have generated ISO images uh, for the HTPC now that you can install through Anaconda, where you just hit next, 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 and you're done. But because I don't have because I I don't have predefined user accounts, it doesn't boot into a graphical interface because there needs to be a Kodi user to launch Kodi in full screen. Oh, yeah, I. And, if you told me that, I would I have would have given you a a way to get a user account creation into Anaconda. Would it yeah, work better now? With the build script, there is a flag I can pass in the build script, so that way I'm building against the Fedora Server Edition rather than yes. the Silver Blue Edition, and that will allow a user to generate user accounts. But I yeah. specifically need a user created created called Cody. And then I need, and then I specifically need another user, without pseudo permissions, or oh. with with pseudo permissions. So I need to make two users, and oh. I'm trying to make this as deployable as possible. So what I'm doing, so what I did, 
is I experimented with uh, creating two systemd scripts that would just generate users. And I got it so that it can make users if I turn SE Linux off. <laughs> uh... <laughs> but this is a this is a Kodi box. This is a Kodi operating system. We should probably have SE Linux turned on because you know some of those Kodi add-ons are a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah, we should have SE Linux for that. Yeah. So, uh, w- w- in the name of not a bad idea, I should probably be having SE Linux turned on, and I should learn how to write an SE Linux policy <laughs> to yeah. allow these two system units to just generate users and then remove themselves. <laughs> But uh, that's what I've delved into just this last week, and it kind of got me brewing into uh, looking at Fedora systems again. Because, you know, uh, Fedora is one of my favorite Linux distributions, right? It is a fantastic distribution. They do a lot of work that just aligns with my with my goals. They are a distribution that literally paves the path in developing the, the, the Linux ecosystem. Because... Uh, when when you look at it, they're always pushing like the new thing, like uh, PyPyR by default. I mean, yes, they weren't the first ones to do that, but they were the biggest group to really to really uh, introduce PyPyR as a default sound system on Linux. Yeah, the fr- they were the ones that pushed Wayland. Uh, they pushed uh, back in the day. They were the ones pushing Pulse Audio, and uh, they even drive like uh, for uh, forward development on GNOME to some extent too. And of course, uh, all your kernels are hand signed by Linus Torvalds himself, because he also uses Fedora, <laughs> <laughs> because it's easy to install compared to Debian. <laughs> yeah, which I don't blame him. <laughs> you need to have a click, click, click install and be done. Something Debian used to very much lack, and still, its installer is a bit of a it, I mean, the Debian installer does its job. Yeah. It does it do its job well? No, but it does its job. <laughs> yeah. Of course, that also depends on which version of Debian you're looking at, too. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, I do have some issues with Fedora still, though. Because, you know, I still can't watch some DRM content in Firefox. Really? Still can't. Like, uh, I cannot watch my own YouTube streams from Firefox on Fedora with the RPM package. Huh. Yeah. So uh, we have delved down the rabbit hole of figuring out how to create our own Fedora repository, and we're going to build our own Firefox package. (laughs) Because, Uh. and the reason why we need the native package for Firefox is because I love to use MPV for watching my videos. Because it just works better than the Firefox, than uh, the YouTube uh, client on Firefox. It's just a, I mean, yes, it's not ni- as nice as a user experience, but I tend to get a better picture out of it. <laughs> so I use this uh, Firefox ex- extension where I just hit a keybind and it lo- and it loads the video up in MPV. But this doesn't work with the flat pack. Have you ever h- heard of this thing called Chromium? I have heard of this thing called Chromium. In fact, that's what I'm using to talk with you right now is Chromium. <laughs> But at the same time, I like the features that Firefox has because in order to get those same features in Chromium, I had to use Google Chrome, and I'm not about to go that far. Interesting. For me, a browser is basically a display window. Yeah, I know. But uh, I, I'm trying to get away from putting everything in the browser because that's what I used to do. And now I'm trying to put everything in individual applications just to see like how practical that is still to do these days. Because, you know, putting everything up in the browser is easy. It was never all that practical, especially when you have a full-blown protocol to display remote things. Well, of course. Really, that's really what a browser is for. It's a... When have I ever done things that are practical? <laughs> never. Okay, just just checking. But I'm curious on what uh, you've been uh, delving around with here with these atomic desktops, because I know you've been spinning up these images a little bit longer than me, at least. Yeah. Uh, Last thing I did, I upgraded my image from 39 to 40. That's a big change. 
Yeah. I changed one number. <laughs> <laughs> that's But the, yeah. st- the ability of that. That's that's why I like this uh, uh, atomic system. All I have to do is change one number in one file on GitHub, and 10 minutes later I can do upgrade, and I'm done. And it's a completely new system or an upgraded system, one version later, and it works just as well as it did before. Not no need to be scared; it will, it will go wrong or something to that effect. Well, now you're just making it sound too easy. <laughs> I'll get there one of these days. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so am I going to be sticking with the atomic desktop? I don't know, but you know, it's just a cool thing to tinker with, <laughs> and that's just what I like to do—is just tinker. And I like to have my computer working. I don't know why you never want to do that. It's it's just a desktop computer. Just yeah, have a but... backup. Just have a backup. I have a backup. Yeah, I have a backup. It's right here. It's it's called my laptop. Well, it's called my laptop too. But <laughs> see, <laughs> see, it's running the same same operating system, exactly the same operating system. Yeah. So if if you if you break your computer, you have a backup that's replicated. And and by exactly the same, I I do mean exactly the same. Even though their hardware is different, it's all the OS bits are to the t equal if i update them in the same cycle of the day because well if i update this one my desktop tomorrow and my laptop today they might not be equal because image will get updated in the meantime but if i update them in the same day which it does automatically they're going to be exactly the same operating systems to every single bit which is what makes it so nice when i'm trying to troubleshoot something that's good uh, you ever have you ever have an issue of where it works on one computer but not the other yet yes also oh, it's that... not the exact same system okay uh it's getting there actually like a couple of uh, weeks ago my my bluetooth stopped working on my uh desktop and the uh, USB for the mouse, uh, wireless mouse Logitech, stopped connecting. No idea why. Everything was detected. I had no, I had no idea why it would, why it would stop working. It, when I, all I did was plug it into my laptop and everything worked. Uh, not a Guess what mouse? I did? Guess what I did to fix it? Oh, what was that? I rebased to another version of, of my image. And then okay. rebase back, and yeah. it fixed everything. And I can explain why, because it uh, when you rebase, it cleans up a lot more than just than just what it cleans up on update. Yeah, it's just like completely removing some things. Yeah, so it completely trashed anything that wasn't required after the rebase, and everything magically worked. <laughs> well, it's not okay. magic, but it probably was something that was that either i very likely i uh placed there that wasn't supposed to be there some probably like in some random directory slash var it it probably is uh there there's all kinds of random things in slash var uh one day uh yeah. i heavily encourage a user just to like poke around and just look at look don't try to change anything don't but you know anything. if you just if if you look you don't hurt anything and for those who do not know what var really is like the name name suggests it's where where your uh your programs should put variable things things that change over well, time and they need it therefore needs to be writable anyway you well that's put what it they, into a that's what they're fast. supposed to do yes supposed to do We have so many supposed to do in Linux standard that are not actually done. Like for example, uh, 
the default files should be in slash user slash Etsy. They're not. Ma many put default file in slash Etsy, which is wrong. And yeah. that's uh, makes my life harder. Well, of course, uh, there's these things called standards, but nobody nobody likes the standards, so they make their own standard. Yeah. And now there's two new standards. I think there's an XKCD about that. Yes, it is. There yeah. is an XKCD about everything. Oh, well, at this point, there is. Uh, how many are there right now? How many XKCD are there? A few thousand. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now that we're now that we're done scaring all the nor normal people away because you know they don't like immutable systems, uh, can we talk about a more popular subject of, of desktops? Sure. <laughs> okay, now uh, it's it's pretty well known that I don't use a desktop environment, even though I I consider it a desktop environment, but nobody calls it a desktop environment. I just use a window manager uh, uh, of Sway. You know, I, I you do use a highly, compositor. Yeah, I, I use a compositor, but for the normies, we got to call it window manager. That way they know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it is a tiling. Uh, it is a tiling system. So I get so I get the all all of the fancy tiling scripts and everything. Uh, I'm I'm not running any scripts for like the dynamic tiling or anything because I used to. And I just don't see a point in having them because most of the time I just open two to three windows per workspace. And I've got 10 of those, so I can still open plenty of windows. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's it makes things a little bit more readable when you only have two compared to, like, six open. <laughs> but then again, I'm just using 24-inch screens. And, uh, Big Pod, I believe you're a GNOME user, unless uh, you yes. fell down the plasma hype train. No, I haven't. Not yet? Okay. No. Okay. Now, uh, I've I've tried using GNOME lately, but I have this thing called uh, three three uh, screens connected to my computer, and GNOME is great for one or two screens. I I don't like it with the third. Hmm. I just don't. I have just two, so yeah, I don't see those problems. And I've. And I've also like come down to the conclusion that uh, I like having separated workspaces across my screens. So while I can be on workspace one on one screen, I can be on works workspace three on another. And uh, on GNOME, you can toggle it. So that way you have a screen that's just static on workspaces. So it'll only ever show, show the one or can get it so that both the screens share, uh, share the uh, virtual workspaces, which uh, the virtual workspaces in GNOME, I think, are a fantastic solution for a single monitor. <laughs> I don't really use workspaces, so... Ah, you're one of those I... people. Yes. Uh, do you just full screen everything while you're at it? <laughs> no, I don't. I... <laughs> oh. I Since I have two screens, I can split it up a bit, and one screen is mostly full screen, Oh, way. so you're saying you actually close windows? No. Oh. I just alt tab. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, of course, uh, mine's. I can go talk for days about like my configuration, but uh, and you know, I could probably get get you really bored on it. But uh, you can just go to like my dot files. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. You can just look at the configurations that I have there. I, I don't have just this way configuration, but I've got configurations for several different uh, alternatives. I think I even have a cage break config, which if you don't know what cage break is, you probably don't want to use cage break. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to use cage break. And the only reason I know I don't want to use cage break is because I tried to use cage break. <laughs> <laughs> I know what cage is, so okay. I think I get why you wouldn't want to use it. <laughs> I mean, I, I I do use cage for the HTPC image because you know we gotta have something to display Cody, and it's just like yeah. if we're only going to to uh, show just Cody, we might as well just just use a compositor that just shows one thing. <laughs> but uh, I'm curious on why you've been sticking with GNOME all this time. 
because it, it just works it gets out of my way that's really my reasoning i i don't have much problems it's minimal it gets out of the way that's that's what i normally say because it's actually what i really think of it also oh, uh you're not like super excited about all these things that uh, plasma is implementing like the x wayland no. video bridge protocol the they got i think they got the screen tearing protocols first and then uh they're they've already uh added the explicit sync uh support that those are good features but yeah. i really don't need them oh half okay. the time i'm half the time if i'm gonna share a screen i'm gonna share a screen via virtual cam one obs anyway and I don't really get the screen tearings all that much, so I don't Well, you're care. on Wayland, so you're not going to get the screen tearing. But uh, the, the reason why you want to enable the screen tearing is sometimes you want your GPU to be, a, to be able to pre-render the image and, and th toss it to the display before the display is ready to refresh. Hmm. That might and, be good, that, but... And that's more exclusive for, like, gaming than anything else. So if you're not, like, the super sweaty gamer, you probably don't care too much about it. Yeah, or definitely or not. If you just natural, Or if you just naturally own a high refresh uh, rate display. I don't. I just don't oh, care okay. about that much. I normally lock my, my FPS at, like, 70 FPS anyway. And since oh. I have 60 hertz monitors... Yeah, uh, I why I why make my GPU do more work than it actually needs to? I mean that's a good that's a good point. And uh, you know, I could argue that's exactly why I use Sway because you know, uh, there's nothing going on. <laughs> uh, let actually, you know what? I can I can check this real quick here. Let's see, Intel GPU top. How much GPU am I using right now? Uh, so for the preference here, I'm using an Arc A770 GPU. Uh, I'm sure that there's a couple of people that know this. Uh, and I'm using... Well, OBS is using the only noticeable amount of GPU compared to Sway, which is doing a whole lot of nothing. But then again, there's like no effects, no animations or anything like that. Uh, there's just like super basic transparency. So there's really not a whole lot for a, for Sway to use the GPU with. <laughs> yeah. On other hand, my on my laptop, since it wouldn't be really fair to show to show on my desktop, it does nothing to GPU. <laughs> yeah. Like it's literally, <laughs> z uh, I think it's a zero percent on all the all the things. Oh, all right, but but yeah, uh, honestly though, like the main reason I so I've been messing around with the tiling window managers for so long now that I've just built up that preference for using them too, and now I'm kind of just trapped because I don't think I can actually go back to a de to a, like a proper desktop environment because I tried going back to KDE with the Plasma Six release, and I never had issues with Plasma Six being buggy, but I always just kept running into things where it's just like, man, I wish I could just hit this key bind. It would just jump me straight to this window. Have you tried testing Cosmic? I have not tried testing Cosmic yet. That's that's on my that's on my list of things to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Light microphones, they fly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Cosmic is probably the one desktop environment that I'm probably the most excited for. And I know that there is a Ublue image that builds Cosmic, so I could just simply... So when I get get around to installing this this atomic desktop thing on my on my computer, because, you know, eventually I'm going to wind up doing it, just so I can blow up yet another Gen 2 installation, uh, uh, I can... I I guess I can uh, experiment, experiment with it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see uh, on how bad it might actually be we'll find mm. out we'll see <laughs> or or maybe i could just do a video series on it just go like this week in cosmic it hasn't crashed yet <laughs> <laughs> i i'm certain that there's going to be a system 76 rep out there because i know that a couple of them actually do watch my channel <laughs> i i actually know that <laughs> and, so I am certain that uh, they would really appreciate me actually, you know, doing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I'm still of opinion that they, they might not be the best uh, stewards of Cosmic, but okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, at least they're trying. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's the greatest thing that we can talk about, like, in the Linux desktop is get, if if you want to do something, give it a tr- give it a shot. Yeah. Just see how well it works out. That's literally what Canonical has done. With Ubuntu. And yes, there have been things that don't that don't work anymore. You know, like uh, Unity, uh, the original plans for Mir, <laughs> and, yep. and so on. <laughs> they, Mir pivoted but, hard. Yeah, but you know, uh, at least at least they tried. <laughs> but unlike what most people think, Mir still actually exists. It and does. It's still used. Unlike it, what it most does. people think. Yeah, it's it's mainly used for like IoT applications these days. So like uh, yeah. your Kiosk display or something like that. And it's and actually a compiler for Valent, not its own display server. It is it a proper compositor or is it yeah. like uh, something else at this point? Because uh, I know that there is a uh, new for Fedora proposal for like this uh, compositor. Yeah, it's kind of which... sorta. More a library of sorts, but really does all the things required, like mo- mo- or most of the things required for it to like do the IoT thing. So all, all you would need to do is implement like desktop, desktop things. Yeah. If you wanted a real desktop. And you know, I I I think that that might actually be something worth watching, especially if you know like that spin proposal actually becomes a thing. Because that's when uh, we can really start looking at Mir as like a vi- as a viable uh, compositor library to build against. Much yeah. more in terms of like uh, compared to WL Roots and Smithy, which uh, uh, the reason why that matters is because if you're if you're a Wayland com- uh, com- uh, compositor or a Wayland compositor library maintainer, you you actually have voices that you can vote yeah. for the Wayland protocols. Honestly, I'm more... still still waiting for somebody to build a compiler based on Lib Weston. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm certain that there's somebody out there that's looked at possibly doing it. That would be that would be <laughs> a proper proper by the book Valen environment. <laughs> it, it would be. <laughs> well, Weston is a reference implementation of. Wayland, it is the so. official reference implementation yeah. of Wayland. <laughs> Yeah, so by the book as it can get. Yep, as by the book as it can get. And I do know that Weston is is seeing a lot of use in like the automotive industry for some reason. Yes, and on Windows, ironically. Oh, is it being used on Windows? Uh, WSL. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, WSL, the uh, the enablement for desktop Linux desktop applications, so to show up in your uh, in your Windows environment. That is actually running on Western. Okay. In a in a very weird architecture, but it's still Western. It's it's Wayland only. Yeah. Plus an X Wayland thing, but yeah. Yeah, I knew that it was Wayland only, but I was just uh, wondering if they were, j- I, and I was wondering what they were using. I figured that they were using some something, uh, like a mutter base because you know. Gnome's as official as it gets nope. for like a corporate en- enterprise desktop. No, nope. it's Lib Weston, it's Weston based. Okay. I mean, it's actually actually Weston Weston. So, yeah. Well, that's uh, that that's interesting to see, and you know, uh, there. The main reason why we want more voices in uh, Wayland is because for the longest time. Gnome's been basically like the driving force of Wayland, and uh, they are also like the biggest limiting factor in Wayland more times than yeah. not. <laughs> so the more voices we have to not just have to deal with Gnome, the better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You should get so like you should get like a le- a uh, lead pouch to put on the end of your microphone. I need to get a weight. Yes. Yeah, a weight. Uh, just to correct me uh, uh wslg as it's called is using weston uh extended weston with rdp backend 
Okay, so it's not like actually properly displaying the window then. It's just piping no. the window in through RDP and then Windows is picking it up. Yeah. Yeah. That seems excessive. <laughs> no, it doesn't because you need it's a VM. You need to get it into into Windows. Okay, that makes somehow. sense. Somehow. Yeah. You need to get it into Windows somehow. Fancy things were virtual machines. Thanks, Windows. Yes. Well, it, it needs a Linux kernel at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just figured that they well, came Linux up with like, some hacky solution to get Linux running beside Windows. Yes, they did that. Like They did the Vine thing, but they realized performance isn't great. Uh, the coverage performance isn't, isn't great. great. Sometimes you're going to get two kernels trying to talk to the same device. <laughs> uh, it wasn't actually a kernel. It oh. was literally, literally a... Uh, translation layer, but performance wasn't great. Uh, uh, things didn't work correctly because, well, coverage wasn't good enough. You couldn't ha- you couldn't have hundred percent coverage, so they gave up and and did a a good thing and, st- and created the micro VM with Linux kernel and bunch of namespaces. Yeah. And, you know, that's probably, like, the cleanest way to do it. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> uh, we, we've already mastered the art of virtualization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, translation is more difficult than sometimes it needs to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Microsoft is a big steward of virtualization with uh, Hyper-V and, and so yeah. on. So uh, uh, it's good, good to see that they're attempting to do something in... The reasonable manner because how many people are really going to be like loading graphical desktop desktop Linux applications on Windows anyway? Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah, there. I'm I'm certain that there's going to be somebody that goes like, "Oh, I do that," but that's not I the do that. Yeah, I mean, you do that, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like uh, the majority of people that are using Windows, even like Windows Power users probably don't do that they've probably played around with it go like oh this is pretty cool so i can install rhythm box on, on my windows computer well if you're using uh vsl a lot you're probably gonna run into times you yeah. might want to use uh graphical applications I, it does make me wonder in like context of applications like Kden live that do have a windows port because i do believe like the linux port of Kden live just works better than the windows port does so I yeah. wonder if you can just load Kden Live over over a uh, WSL and just have a better Kden Live experience than using the actual Windows binary. Yeah, one of the one of the probably bigger use cases is you know what file managers. Uh yes, because you know uh there there's a reason people use Linux and one of them one of them used to be the file managers were just better. <laughs> well, not just that, like directly interfacing with uh file system instead of using plan 9 protocol to mm-hmm. to connect it to uh, to windows uh, windows system <laughs> that's probably a better better choice yeah it probably is <laughs> and if you want to know test your application if you're doing web development you want to have a browser that is directly in the same context and so on yeah which I don't know. I think Windows Explorer used to support like connecting to uh, remote systems over SSH. I don't know if it still does. Not sure. Yeah, uh, they were doing. Well, it wasn't SSH, but SFTP. Uh, yeah, it used to be able to do that in like Windows. I think this was like XP Pro. You could do it with. I think it it still does support that, but you know, no. But who uses FTP these days besides you? And I'm sure that there's a server ISPs. administrator somewhere that, that would say that, yes, I still use FTP to upload files. <laughs> or, you know, there's, or, you know, a distro package maintainer uh, that <laughs> decides that he's going to sync the distro package repository upload yeah. via FTP. Because that's how a lot of them get served. Yep. <laughs> Sadly. I mean, it, it works. It's an established protocol. Yeah. I'm, and honestly, I would much prefer transferring over FTP compared to HTTPS. Hmm. It just works cleaner. I don't know. It, uh, HTTPS or HTTP really is a file transfer protocol at its core. 
Yeah. Out of the day. Yeah, but uh, it because of the secure nature of it, uh, yeah. if there's a time mismatch, this mismatch between like the destination and uh, your client, uh, bet- between you or or that, and I'm talking about like all those gateways, the switches, uh, the firewalls, and everything that you go through. If there's a time difference, uh, that can cause some really severe issues. Yeah, but that doesn't happen actually all that often. It depends if you're using satellite. Okay. <laughs> and even then, even then, we're ta- you would have to really use a really, really, really far away satellite to create like that kind of an latency delay. I mean, uh, I live in rural America. I'm connecting to the satellites. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, but still. Sometimes. Not know, all the time, but sometimes. Knowing enough about satellites, I can tell you that if you get a second, you, you are very, very, very unlucky. Well, yeah. But, you know, uh, rsync is the best down- protocol for downloading any-, any massive files anyway. Or, you know, ultimately, the absolute best protocol for downloading anything is BitTorrent. But we're uh, not going to talk too much into that because, you know, there's a lot of gray area with BitTorrent. Yeah. But uh, it really is the best download protocol. <laughs> fun fact, uh, at one point I had like three second latency to my router. That's Welcome bad. to Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, that's really, really, really bad. You guys, you guys need to build your homes out of sticks and not concrete. <laughs> well, <laughs> concrete better. Yeah, <laughs> but sticks are cheap. <laughs> sure, but uh, winds are winds are pretty good here. Standard oh. winds. <laughs> I mean, winter's not that bad here either. There, there are locations here. Uh, that put stones on their shingles on the roof to keep them from flying off during yeah. winds. Uh, my solution is the metal roof that you bolt to your to uh, your seat, your uh, roof. Yeah, those are ugly. No, 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 I mean yes, it's ugly, but it's functional. <laughs> or you do, you do a couple of stones and you're done. I mean, it's still better than hay. Well, anyways, guys, uh, that's it for the show this week. It's a it's a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, you can you can give give us a shout shout out. Us, tell us that we that it was too brief, just too brief, by sending us an email at contact at tuckspace dot com. You can also contact us three of us directly, and uh, on Mastodon, you will see the the profiles right below here yeah somewhere down in the, down in the description if you're watching us on on the youtube or in the show notes if you're if you're listening to us through the yeah. preferred method through our self-hosted rss feed it yes. is entirely hosted by us distributed by us we're not using any content delivery service or anything so when you're if you're subscribing to us through itunes itunes is pulling from us yes. not i not their own stuff yep. so if you so, if you would like to support those in- adventures, let us know, and we might actually come up with a, with a couple links links or ways for to uh, do some funding because this stuff is costing me money. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. guys, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>